done a few videos on Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7 at this point, but I think maybe one directly comparing Wi-Fi 7 versus Wi-Fi 6 might be useful to somebody who's maybe looking to upgrade and not sure if it's worth it for either of those. And today we're gonna use the new Asus Zen Wi-Fi BT10, a new Wi-Fi 7 router to demonstrate some of those differences. Full disclosure, Asus sent me this router to use for this video. So first, the Wi-Fi and a number after it, like Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 7, is a relatively new naming structure from the Wi-Fi Alliance, the industry body that tests and certifies Wi-Fi products to help people understand the different Wi-Fi standards. Before that, and when you look on your router's box probably still, the older naming structure, which is 802.11 and a letter or two attached to it, is what was used. Here that is, plus the new names that have been attached to some of them retroactively. Now it's good to know because most manufacturers will actually still use the old naming structure letters or parts of them in their product names. And it can help you figure out if the router you are looking at, online especially, is Wi-Fi 6, Wi-Fi 6E, Wi-Fi 7, etc. Some routers, like this Asus one here, actually have the same naming structure, but they will also use a different one to help you navigate their own product line, if you understand how it works, that is. So here, Asus uses the first letter of the Wi-Fi version in the name, so B for BE, which is from Wi-Fi 7, 802.11BE. The next letter is T for tri-band. They also have D for dual band and Q for quad band, which is the number of frequency bands that it has. In this case, one 2.4 gigahertz, one 5 gigahertz, and one 6 gigahertz. And then 10 is for how many concurrent streams the router has among those bands. We'll get to what all of those mean soon, as well as the benefits of Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7, and even the downsides, so that you guys can better decide which one you need. Okay, first, let's talk about what makes Wi-Fi 6 Wi-Fi 6, in case you aren't entirely familiar, specifically which features in Wi-Fi 6 that Wi-Fi 7 improves upon. And then let's talk about what Wi-Fi 7 adds to that. Firstly, we have MU MIMO, which stands for multiple user, multiple input, multiple output. And it allows multiple clients on the network to send and receive data at the same time up to eight in Wi-Fi 6. 1024 QAM to allow more data to be sent per packet and it translates to 25% faster data transfers in Wi-Fi 6 over Wi-Fi 5. Then Wi-Fi 6E just added much needed spectrum in the form of the six gigahertz band. Now before 6E, your Wi-Fi network would use one or both bands, 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. The difference between these bands for the most part is that 2.4 gigahertz has a lower top speed of about 0.8 gigabits per second, but further range. And five gigahertz has a higher top speed of 2.8 gigabits per second and a lower range, and it isn't as good at penetrating walls and objects. Wi-Fi 6E added the much less used six gigahertz into the mix as well, thanks to the FCC freeing that up for Wi-Fi use not too long ago. That essentially quadruples the amount of bandwidth that Wi-Fi devices can use as it adds 14 additional 80 megahertz channels and seven additional 160 megahertz channels. And while these are all the same size channels as five gigahertz, you can still get faster actual speeds than five gigahertz in most cases, simply because these new channels have way less congestion on them, which also means you'll get much better latency on six gigahertz as well. Congestion and latency on Wi-Fi channels is what causes those drops in speed, as well as issues with your buffering in videos, frame rate drops in games, and dropped Zoom meetings, etc. And with that, how does Wi-Fi 7 differ from Wi-Fi 6 and 6E? Well, Wi-Fi 7 includes all of those features I just mentioned, as well as some improvements to some of those features, and a few completely new, very useful features as well. Now, in regards to MU MIMO, Wi-Fi 7 is 16 streams available versus the eight from Wi-Fi 6, so more devices can communicate at once, which means faster speed and less latency. The 1024 QAM has now been updated to 4K QAM, which just means that even more data is being sent per packet, which alone increases speeds by about 20% as well. We also have the six gigahertz band from 6E, as mentioned, but but in 6E, the widest channel supported is 160 megahertz. In Wi-Fi 7, that's doubled to 320 megahertz. The larger the channel, the more data it can transmit at a time, so more speed. In fact, Wi-Fi 7 is up to 2.4 times faster than Wi-Fi 6E. All of that allows for more speed, lower latency, and better reliability. But the thing I think is the most exciting feature that benefits all of that even more is MLO, or multi-link operation. This feature, again new to Wi-Fi 7, allows the router and devices to combine all of the frequencies, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz together into a single connection. Before Wi-Fi 7, devices used to have to connect to one of the bands at a time on a fixed channel within it. Now, a device can send and receive data on the 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, and 6 gigahertz 
all at the same time, potentially meaning much wider channels, allowing them to transmit even more data, but also it can adjust what channels and what bands it's using to get the highest speed, lowest latency, and the best reliability automatically. And this Asus Zen Wi-Fi BT10 also uses MLO to enhance the mesh backhaul. So the connection between each of the routers that your data goes through to get to the node connected to the internet is also able to use all three of those frequencies. So the connection between the routers isn't limited by the frequency and can adjust which is the best to use in real time. The idea is that this will not only start to boost speed, reliability, and latency across the board, but it will also help prepare us for these over one gigabit per second fiber optic networks that are all starting to roll out. I have two gigabit per second in my apartment now and was told by my ISP that five and 10 gigabit per second plans are coming soon. So if you have speeds over one gigabit per second, Wi-Fi 6E is the bare minimum that you need to see anything over one gigabit per second consistently wirelessly. And that's just going to the internet and leaving your home network. The higher speeds of Wi-Fi 7 end up playing an even bigger role for things inside the network talking to each other, like accessing a NAS or a network attached storage from your laptop wirelessly, for example. Especially if you have a faster ethernet port on your router, like using one of the 10 gigabit ethernet ports here on the Asus Zen Wi-Fi BT10, as that allows you to get those over one gigabit per second speeds accessing files off of that, regardless of the internet speed coming into your house. In addition to that, the Asus Zen Wi-Fi BT10 can help with speeds and security using a feature it has called Smart Home Master. This basically allows you to segment specific traffic on the network on different SSIDs or networks all on the same hardware. So you can set up an IoT network just for your smart lights and other smart home appliances and select to limit those to the slower but longer reaching 2.4 gigahertz band only. So they never try and use the faster bands, freeing up bandwidth potentially for more demanding devices like your phone or your computer. You can also create one for your kids that allows you to easily manage their screen time collectively instead of having to configure each device individually or a VPN network that you can connect your preferred VPN to and any device connected to the dedicated VPN network will automatically be routed through it, providing the VPN benefits to all of the devices on the network, like hiding your data. Okay, so what are the downsides of Wi-Fi 7? Why would you maybe go for Wi-Fi 6 or 6E instead? Well, again, the six gigahertz band doesn't have as far of range and isn't as good as penetrating walls and objects as five gigahertz is, and even more so as 2.4 gigahertz is, but you're gonna have that same issue with a Wi-Fi 6E router. And it just means that for the very best speeds, you'll probably wanna go for a mesh system. So you'll have more nodes to cover as much of your space as possible in that fastest six gigahertz. Another downside is the same as any new technology, price. Routers that use Wi-Fi 7 are just more expensive. Although that is actually changing way faster than I thought it would. The router I'm using in this video, for example, the Asus Zen Wi-Fi BT10, is one of the best priced mesh Wi-Fi 7 routers that I could find when compared to Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 6 mesh routers even. So it might be worth checking out. I'll leave a link below though to the best price that I could find on it. And I'll try to keep that updated as best as I can. Lastly, availability. You need new hardware, like a new router, and you also need new hardware in your client devices, like your phone or your tablet or your computer. You can't simply update them to get all of these new features. So you need to have, or at least plan to have, Wi-Fi 6 devices to get most of the benefits from your Wi-Fi 6 network, Wi-Fi 6E devices to get most of the benefits from Wi-Fi 6E network, and Wi-Fi 7 devices to get most of the benefits from your Wi-Fi 7 network. But there you go. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments below what you thought about this video. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. And I'll also, again, leave a link to the router I used in this video for you to check that out. But it is late. I'm gonna go maybe stream a movie and call it a night. Good night. Someone flushing above me. Cool, 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 cool.